The sub 4 meter tax rebate is like the curse of the Indian automotive industry. This size was once the realm of elegant looking hatchbacks, but today every sedan and SUV is trying to fit into that space. And quite frankly, none of these sedans look as desirable or aspirational or even as amazing as their classic three box counterparts. But then this segment seems to be booming because every notable car maker that is gunning for big numbers wants a piece of this pie. Tata in particular seems to have special love for this segment. After all, they kickstarted it with the Indigo ECS. And just when other car makers were trying to play catch up, they launched their second offering, the Tata Zest. And just when you thought you had seen everything that this segment had to offer, they have delivered the third. It's called the Tigor. <laughs> Like most compact sedans out there, this one too is derived from a hatchback, the Tiago. But having produced two compact sedans already, Tata understands the nuances of this form factor. The learnings are evident. Compared to the Tiago, the Tigor has a longer wheelbase, a wider rear door and a neatly flowing coupe roof roofline. The side profile then looks quite sleek and sporty like a four-door coupe. It doesn't look like a hatchback with a bootstrapped on form that is typical to compact sedans. And when I had reviewed the Tiago, I had said that the nose was designed to be a little longer with the sedan derivative in mind. And now that you have it, it does look quite balanced for what it is. It has hints of the BMW 3 GT when seen from the rear, while this shade of brown, the high ride height and the chunky alloys remind us of the versatile Volvo S60 Cross Country. There's plenty of attention to detail to differentiate the Tigor from the Tiago. The grille has a more pronounced hexagonal mesh. The headlights get a nice black base, while the contrasting amber color blinkers, the double barrel arrangement and the projector beam lamps make it look quite premium. An intricate hexagonal mesh design is also seen on the tail lights and the LED treatment looks upmarket. The icing on the cake, however, is the large brake lamp integrated in the roof spoiler, which is carried over unchanged from the Kite 5 concept that was shown at last year's Auto Expo. Another interesting touch is the boot lid. It doesn't employ the conventional gooseneck hinges that you get on a typical sedan or a compact sedan. Instead, you have this multi-link mechanism with uh, the kind of studs that you get inside a hatchback. That not only maximizes the overall space, but also makes for slightly easier loading without really having to engineer a more complex notchback mechanism. At 419 litres, it is not only the largest boot that Tata has ever packed on a compact sedan, but it is also significantly larger than its class rivals. Speaking of space, the longer wheelbase liberates more room for the rear bench as compared to the Tiago. The coupe roofline does demand a slightly lower hip point to maintain a decent headroom, but ingress and egress isn't affected much over the hatch, and the end-to-end -end cushioning also makes these seats more accommodating. The headrests at either end are larger than the Tiago's for better safety and comfort. There's also a centre headrest now for the fifth occupant and a centre armrest for when the rear bench isn't full. While most of the features are similar to the Tiago, this sedan gets a touchscreen infotainment system on the top spec trim. Though a tad laggy in its operation, it packs in satellite navigation and a host of Tata's apps that are built for the Android platform. Audio quality is best in class as expected. The quality of the plastics though and the fit and finish is similar to the Tiago, but the compact sedan class has seen better. Like the Tiago though, pricing is expected to be the Tigor's trump card and this cabin therefore won't make you feel shortchanged. Tigor gets the same engine options as the Tiago. Let's start with the petrol. It's the 1.2 litre Revitron motor, puts out about 85 PS of power and 114 Newton meters of torque. Now, those figures are identical to the Tiago. However, the overall tuning of the engine is slightly different, and this engine for the Tigor also gets a counterbalancer. Now, if you remember when I reviewed the Tiago, I had mentioned that the acceleration felt a little jittery, it didn't feel as clean. This one eradicates that. The acceleration is relatively cleaner and smoother. This engine gets into its zone above the 3500 rpm mark. This isn't the peppiest 1.2 litre motor around, but it has enough grunt to happily potter around town. A reverse gearing over the Tiago also makes sure that the additional weight of the boot doesn't bog this car down when compared to the hatch. The diesel option comes in the form of a 3-cylinder 1.05-litre motor. Now that engine does make sense in the Tiago, it's a small hatchback and urban runabout. 
But this one promises to be a little more than that. And if you would like to exploit that, this engine does feel a little underpowered. Tata is rumored to be working on a 1.5 litre motor for the Nexon. And if that is true, that engine would have made more sense for this particular car. It also happens to be quite a noisy motor even at city speeds. Take it to the highway and the road and the wind noises join in, making it quite a noisy cabin to be in. Both the variants need about 3000 rpm to cruise at 100 km an hour and highway speeds feel stable. Push beyond that and the skinny tyres start feeling inadequate. The braking is soft but predictable and anti-lock brakes could only be offered on the top spec trim. Driver and front passenger airbags can specify it on most of the trims though. The longer wheelbase, the boot strapped on, it all has necessitated Tata to sort of rework the suspension setup to give you a better ride quality as compared to the slightly stiffer ride quality in the Tiago. It's worked, the ride quality is quite comfortable, it's quite compliant. The only complaint is the suspension is a little noisy, especially at the front. The suspension setup then is quite neutral without a pronounced roll or pitch. In a nutshell, the Tigor has a noisy cabin overall, but has impressive levels of comfort and kit for an entry-level sedan. It is a roomier alternative to the Tiago and something that I would classify as an urban runabout than a highway muncher. The compact sedan segment, it's seen a bit of a slump in the past few months and it's only expected to go further southward. But the Tigor, it seems well poised to add a bit of freshness to this segment by being a smart-looking, well-kitted, value-for-money offering just like its hatchback sibling.